you know when you're walking through the craft store and you pass by the clearance section and you're like, mm, there may be something in here that I've been looking for for ages at a fraction of the price. So then you end up buying something that you weren't looking for and you don't really need, but for a fraction of the price. Yeah, that's the story of how I ended up with 400 yards of tool. sure what the intended purpose of spools of tool, spools of tool, like this are, because it's only nine inches tall, so you're kind of limited on what you can use it for. Lucky for me, I knew exactly what I wanted to use it for. I mean, I did have a project in mind when I purchased it. I didn't buy it just for the heck of it. I immediately thought, hey, that'll be real easy to make ruffles out of. And you know what needs a lot of ruffles is a petticoat. Petticoats can be pretty expensive to buy or to make because there's generally just so much material involved in order to get that floofiness. My brain is telling me that I could just ruffle up all of these nine inch strips of tool and encircle a skirt with them, just like a simple base circle skirt, and it will create floof, especially if I overlap them. There's a possibility that it would be better for me to fold them in half and do the ruffles only you know, about four and a half inches instead of nine inches. I don't know, these are things that I'm going to have to experiment with. But yeah, that's the gist of the project today. I'm gonna take these 400 yards of nine inch tool strips and I'm gonna make myself a petticoat. Do I have any experience in this? No. Do I know what I'm doing? No. Have I done any research? No. Is there any question that I have a yes to? No, let's do it. So first up, I have a piece of base fabric to make the skirt itself, which I can then layer the tool on top of. I think this might've come from my sister when she cleaned out her stash. I honestly don't remember. I did not check in advance how big it is because why would I? It seems like a pretty decent size actually. And I want this petticoat to just be like, probably right below the knee length, like T length, I guess. Maybe a little shorter than T length. What is T length? right below the knee. And I was assuming that I could just make like a circle skirt as the base because y'all know I am super experienced in circle skirts now, but that all depends on if I have enough length here. And then I'm just planning to put it on an elastic waistband. So I'll need to make the waist measurement the size of my hips, if not a little bit bigger, which will also gather it up a little bit and could add to the volume, always a good thing. But if I don't have enough length here, which is a grand possibility, I think I'll have to go for just like a panel skirt instead. Really all that matters to me is that it's as full as possible because what's the point of making a petticoat if it's just gonna be limp? So let me start by taking some measurements. So in order to go over the widest part of my body, my butt, it needs to be at least a 43 inch elastic, or rather it needs to be able to stretch to 43 inches. The elastic itself only needs to be 32 inches so it can sit on my waist. And then there's just the question of length. So 28 inches here is more what I had in mind, but I think to be safe, I might need to make it like 25 inches just because I want to be able to put this on under various skirts without having it show. But I also need to leave room for a hem and for a waistband. So I think I should probably still do 27 to 28 inches. And my fabric is 25 inches. So either the circle skirt is out or I go get a different fabric out of my stash. If I do it as panels instead of as a circle skirt, I can do four panels of 12 inches around the waist and then just triangle it out to however much I have here, basically 25 inches. That's still about 100 inches around the bottom. Ultimately, if it doesn't feel full enough, it's not a big deal. I'm pretty sure I got this fabric for free, so I can just go dig through my stash and find a different fabric and try it all again. After much measuring and marking and re-measuring and remarking, I got four panels out of this fabric and pinned them together. I then switched the needle in my machine because a full 24 hours after completing my last sewing project, I was just having a nice shower when it occurred to me that I hadn't changed the needle back to a normal one after using a stretch needle on my bridesmaid dress. Whoops, didn't seem to make a difference, so whatever. 
Anyway, I sewed the panels together, turned over the top, inserted elastic the size of my waist, and gave it a try. And like, it could work. It's fine, I guess. With all the tulle on it, maybe it would be nice and full, but obviously I'm not loving it. So I went back to my fabric stash for round two. I have a large piece of white cotton-ish material, and after quite a bit of scrimping and precise positioning, I was able to get a circle skirt cut out of it. But dude, the whole time I was messing with this fabric, I kept smelling something weird and gross, and I thought maybe it's the fabric because I did get it at Goodwill out of, you know, a giant bin, but I've washed it thoroughly, and every time I actually smelled the fabric, it smelled just fine. It smells like laundry detergent. So I'm sniffing the floor, my clothes, my hair, the dog, everything around me, trying to figure out what this smell is. And finally, I was just like, well, forget it. I guess it's just the fabric somehow, and I'll just have to wash it again. Then I got up, and right there on the couch in front of me was Puppy Barf. He somehow threw up on the couch without me noticing, and that's what I was smelling for a solid hour before realizing. So the couch cover went in the wash and I went back to figuring out this petticoat base. Once I got the whole thing sewn together and especially once I got the elastic on the top, I was much happier with the size of this version. I hemmed it up to a length like right below the knee and ironed the crap out of it, which did not do much good. And it is now tool time, yay. Yeah, I'm gonna dump the first option. I mean, I'll hold on to it. I think I could turn it into just like a regular slip since it's a nice like light material. But also I have not worn a slip since probably like junior high when I had to wear skirts with hose to church every Sunday. This one is definitely a heavier material, but I don't think that that's going to make any kind of negative difference. If anything, I think it'll just support the tool a little bit better. So now I have to just figure out like what I'm gonna do here. I'm not really sure how to go about this. I feel like there's a fair amount of math involved because I have, you know, the length of the skirt. So how many rows of tool can I line up? Where should they start? Because they shouldn't start directly after the waistband or that would be on my hips and it would look weird. And then also, how much do I need for each circle? How big is the circle itself? And then how much am I going to be gathering the tool up to go around that circle? And if I've learned one thing in the last year, it's that I can't do math while filming myself. So I'll be back. afternoon. Um, I have once again massively incorrectly estimated the time that it's going to take to do this project. I am always either majorly below or majorly above the amount of time it will take to do something. The bridesmaid's dress, I thought that would take days. It took one day. The macrame lamp that I made, thought that that would be a long project. It took about one day. And then I'm like, oh, hey, I can just whip together a petticoat in one day as though I won't have to sew through 400 yards of tulle in order to do so. So the math process went decently well last night, I guess. I kind of figured something out. I basically just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to run out of tool. And I quickly realized that 400 yards of tool is more than I thought it is. I mean, it does sound like a lot of tool, but when you look at the spools, it doesn't seem like that much. You know, it is that much. It's a lot. So I was up until 12.30 a.m. just to finish two thirds of the bottom ruffle. That's all I've done. I'm gonna be slowly working on this over the next week or so. I'd like to get the first three layers of ruffles 
done by, you know, the time I drag myself to bed tonight. I don't know if that's gonna happen though because it is already, oh look, three o'clock in the afternoon for some reason. And for some unknown reason, I decided that I really needed to make a lemon meringue pie today, so that's a chunk of my time as well. Oh well. So this right here is one whole spool, 50 yards of tulle. And on the first layer, I folded it in half, so it's four and a half inches high, wide, thick, tall, tall. That made it a lot fluffier, but it's almost so fluffy that I don't think I could do this on the next seven layers. And the traditional way to make a putty coat out of tulle would be that you start with like a short layer and then the next layer starts here and covers that. And then the next layer starts higher and covers all three. I obviously can't do that because I'm working with nine inch strips of tulle. So that's all I've got is nine inches. So I'm trying to decide how many of them I should fold over and how many I should leave flat. I was originally thinking just the very last ruffle on top, I would leave as the full nine inches. That way it kind of hangs down over the one under it and smooths out that initial area. Now, having seen how incredibly fluffy this is, I kind of think I might need to do all the rest of the layers unfolded at that full nine inches. I am sorry if all of that audio was really bad. This is what I get for putting my mic in a terrible spot and then burying it in my armpit. I just don't know. I think there's a lot of different options. I could do like the bottom two or three layers as the shorter ones and then start doing the longer ones above it. I could do every other one. So a short layer and then a long layer covering it and then a short and then a long because I want this petticoat to be as fluffy as possible, but I also don't want it to be visible through the skirt that it's like a bunch of short little bits of fluff. Like I don't want a skirt to go like bloop, 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 bloop if it's sitting on top of it. I think I just need to come up with a way to test this before I gather yards and yards of tool together, but also I'm not sure how to do that either. So I guess I will think that through while I go make a lemon custard. This poor sewing machine. I don't know how it survived this. It's quite exhausted. I kept expecting it to spontaneously combust. I have never refilled a bobbin so many times in the course of a one sewing project. Even when hemming six layer ball gown style wedding dresses when I was an alteration specialist. Nothing even close to this. Despite my best efforts, I didn't end up getting three ruffles finished. I only finished one. However, I did also finish my lemon meringue tart and then used that one ruffle as a background to take photos of it. And if you're wondering if I got meringue on the ruffle, the answer is yes. After three ruffles, I decided to stop doubling them over in order to get a smoother curve from the outside, I think. I mean, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I did keep trying it on with a skirt after every new ruffle and that seemed right. Without having to fold the strip of tulle in half, sewing through it was much, much faster, especially because Matt and I came up with this handy little contraption that relieved me of pretty much all involvement. This cut down the stitch time for one roll from over an hour to about 20 minutes even when I had to change the thread. However, 
nothing can cut down on the time it takes to gather 50 yards of tool. Just turn on some TV and get her done. Math pretty much went out the window, and I just kept adding ruffles as tightly gathered as I could get them. I ended up with six instead of the eight that I expected, but um, I think it's fluffy enough. guys it's so fluffy i'm gonna die oh my god this is insane i look like a freaking cupcake it is so much rounder than i expected which fully makes sense with the way that i made it some petticoats have more of like a a specific slope triangular shape this one's full on full on ball gown style <laughs> but i love it every single time i tried it on full on West Side Story vibes. <sighs> Was it worth four straight days of running that sewing machine? Absolutely. I do not know when I'll be using this, but I enjoy having it on hand. <laughs> ah, it's so fun. Yeah, this was well worth the time. To say nothing of the cost, giant petticoats like this go for quite a bit of money. Whereas I got all of that tool for 40 bucks. Throw in a couple extra bucks for the amount of thread that I went through because that was a lot and like one or two dollars for the base fabric because I'm pretty sure I got that at Goodwill. I basically got a petticoat for like 50 bucks and four days of labor. But we don't count that. I honestly could not stop smiling while filming this. It's just so much fun to wear. It's so big. This makes me want to make some like 1950s prom style dresses. I see them sometimes being sold at like vintage shops and stuff online. And they're always, you know, giant and fluffy and everything because you need a giant petticoat like this underneath. So this project has been an absolute blast. I've enjoyed every second of it, even the very, very monotonous gathering of tool. It was still honestly quite pleasant. I watched a lot of TV. So thanks for watching, thanks for joining me, and if you see some tool on clearance, you kinda gotta buy it and make yourself a giant ass petticoat. Mm -hmm.